people. Um, yes, Liza. If you have any today. contacts to them, maybe you can. Yes, uh, Liza, I'm contacting them. They are coming, so I think that you can, uh, you, we, we can wait just uh, other than a couple of minutes if uh, it's okay for you. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I can see people here from yes. Greece, um, Italy, Philippines, um, Mexico. What else do we have here? Lisa, if you want, we can uh, we can start. All right, we can do that. Um, one minute. Okay. So I ask to everyone, if it's possible, to put on the camera, so we can start. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. The microphone is yours. Okay. Thank you. So um, hello everyone, um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Um, I hope you are all doing well today. So um, I'm Liza, for those of you that doesn't know me yet. And um, on behalf of the BTG Philippines and all our amazing partners, um, we welcome you to our fourth webinar uh, for this party. And today we will be uh, discussing about the touristic social entre entrepreneurship in post-disaster areas. Um, but before anything else, um, I would like to ask everyone to open their cameras. I can see that some of them are still, you know, not opening their cameras. I, I hope you could join us. And for this part, uh, for the first part of our activity, I would like to um, have here my partner, D. Rd, are you here? Hi, Antonio. Uh, Rd, I think you're on mute. We cannot hear you. Yeah, so D will be, okay, we can hear you now. So D, RD will be starting our icebreaker for today. The stage is yours. Okay, thank you so much, Liza. I missed you. 
Miss it. <laughs> Good evening from the Philippines, everyone. Uh, I think we are in different time zones. But uh, I know you're excited about the discussions later. But first, I want to stimulate our minds and uh, set the mood for today. Okay? So okay. before we start, I want to make sure that everything is working well. So let's start with the cameras, maybe. Everyone, may I invite for the third time? <laughs> may I invite everyone to open their cameras? Oh, yes. I see that's... Uh, uh, okay, now that I'm sure that uh, everyone's camera is working now, I want to check the audio. If you can hear me well, please click the react button and click the heart emoji. All right, now that I have your attention, I thank you, Antonio. <laughs> yes. Mm. Okay, I'm checking if all of the cameras are moving because uh, I <laughs> there is a fun uh, story uh, yesterday. I caught my students faking the video by uploading a virtual background, okay? Then uh, turning off the, the video icon in Zoom so he could pretend that uh, he is listening with my class. Now, I want everyone to say hi to the camera just to make sure that uh, everyone is here. Okay, nice. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the uh, a quick game uh, for today before we start uh, the today's uh, session. This is a very fun game, uh, but first let me, al uh, please allow me to share my screen. Okay. I need to do it carefully so I, uh, uh, I will not spill the answers. Oh no, please. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, just a minute. Can you see my uh, screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, um, I need to, uh, I need to open the presenter's view for a minute. Okay. That's it. I'm sorry for the short delay. So we're going to have a mind puzzle. If you are familiar with uh, Rebus puzzles, then you will enjoy this game. So this mind game uses images or words to convey a phrase or message, typically a common uh, idiom or expressions. So to solve them, you need to make sure that you look at the word, the size, the color. So please take your time and uh, this could be pretty tricky, okay? Okay, so let's start with the first one, but uh, let me tell uh, first the mechanics. So you need to open your chat box. So you're going to post your answers on the chat box. The first one to get the right answer will have the immunity and the power. So immunity because he uh, or she will not be the one to face the consequence. And the power is... Uh, you will be the one to choose the chosen one. We call it the chosen one because he will play a roulette and answer a fun question. So this is also a great way so, uh, to, uh, so we can uh, get to know each other better. Okay, are you ready? So please make sure that uh, you have your chat boxes with you and you're ready to answer uh, the question. Please use. Okay. The first one is, then I need to see the chat box. Liza, can you tell me uh, the answers that we are receiving because I am in a different interface? 
uh they can you actually like make it like bigger because what i'm seeing okay, right okay, now okay. is your powerpoint so i think it should be like full screen so that you know yeah something there. like that yeah okay so the chat box is on please uh type your answers what do you think is this uh, the word that we want to convey in this picture uh let's see okay maybe okay uh we have the first answer and actually it is the right one so actually oh, i was going to say big <laughs> I was it's gonna say I was gonna uh, say big greenhouse yes. because the uh, house is big. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh please uh if I uh, pronounce it right, my Michael is can you open your microphone? Yes, I'm right here. Hi. Well, that was uh, quite fast. <laughs> Congratulations, Michael is now your power is to choose someone from the audience or just uh, randomly pick a name on the participants list okay uh, i will randomly pick um michael michael okay the floor is now on michael michael because you were uh, chosen by michael is you need to play the roulette hi michael Can hello Oh, Sir Michael, nice to meet Hello. you, sir. Um, I will um, please give me your go signal, okay? So, ready? Ready, go ahead. Okay. So, your question is, these are uh, uh, quite fun questions. What would you sing at a karaoke night and why? <laughs> Mm. Okay. Well, uh, Sir Michael's thinking maybe someone ha also uh, have their uh, opinions and comments. You can type it in the chat box. We want what would you see? Well. Everyone can participate. <laughs> yes. Like type of um, song. Starting over again. That's my wow, favorite. Wow, starting over again. <laughs> That's quite a deep song. <laughs> Girl is a whisper from Alejandro's <laughs> holiday. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir, Michael. Uh, nice meeting you. And thank you, Michael. Is. Thank you so much. Now let's move on to the next puzzle. Yeah, the right answer is greenhouse. The next one. Please be fast. Okay. We have actually Michael has got the answer first, but since uh, we uh, we're already done with him, uh, let's move. Uh, let's go on to the next uh, one who got the answer right, Miss Jennifer from the Philippines. Hi, Miss Jen. Hi, Miss Jen. Can you hear your Dee. voice? Yeah. Yes, uh, Miss Jen. Uh, since you have the power to choose the chosen one, please pick someone from the participants. All right. I'd like Later to choose um, Gerardo. Yes, metaphor. Gerardo. Hi, Gerardo. Good evening from the Philippines. Can we hear your voice? Hello. Hello? Yes. I don't know if it, uh, if it's only me, but um, I can't hear Gerardo. Hello. Eliza, uh, please confirm if uh, Gerardo is talking. Gerardo, I'll send the room. I can hear him. I can hear him. Okay, maybe we can uh, call someone else then let's go back to Gerardo later on okay Miss Jen please call another one um let's have Valentino Valentino hi Valentino I made the fourth with me let's go hi hi <laughs> Valentino are you ready so let's roll uh, the roulette roll roll and pick uh, your question 
if you could go back in time, what year would you travel to? Ah, nice question. Um, in the ancient Rome, to see the, okay. the, the major yeah. empire in the world. I would like to be in that time as well. Of course, the Greek gods, uh, the, the, Ro the Roman gods, and the mythology and the... Uh, you know, the characters that we see in the movies. Thank you, Valentina, for that. Uh, maybe we can have two more. This one. This, is, this one is quite tricky. So the, the images are getting harder. The puzzles are getting harder. Okay, we have uh, Joe Bless, Dave from the Philippines. Yes, the right answer is try to understand. So what? why do you think so? Because try to is under the name, under the word stand. So try to understand. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hi, Joe Bless. Please hi, call someone else. Me. Nice meeting you. Please call some uh, someone from the participants. Okay, I think I'll choose Alexandro. Alexandro, good. Thank you, Jobless. Uh, good day, Alexandro. <laughs> I always choose you. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> you knew it. <laughs> she did it on purpose. <laughs> okay, yeah. Alexander, let's uh, let's see what question do we have for you. If you could live anywhere, this is a great question. Where would it be? Of course, it would be in the, the great Philippines. Wow. In, Ma in Manila. <laughs> you, love, you, love, you love traffic. Yes, of course. Of course. And I would like to be a street uh, basketball player there in, in Manila. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, we can't wait to have you in Manila. Manila is such a great place, uh, especially now, after the pandemic, that the pollution... Uh, has is now gone and everything is like in order yeah thank you for that alexandros and let's go on to the last one maybe let's i will choose the hardest question okay so the next question is just a bonus round okay so this is just a bonus round this is just a bonus round so we will uh, i have two more in my slide so we will go with the last one i just want you to answer this yes uh thank you uh job less got the answer right again try uh for forgive and forget so we have forgive and forget nice job less and we have the next one another bonus round then we'll proceed with the last one Yes, travel overseas. <laughs> travel overseas. Okay, now I will uh, ban Jennifer and Jobless from answering <laughs> because they always get the answer right. <laughs> I couldn't even decipher it. Yes, Liza. <laughs> Let's give a chance to the other participants. I want to see uh, hear their voices. The last one is... Yes, travel overseas. So the last one is the hardest one. And the, uh, it is, let's give a chance to others. Antonio, try. <laughs> I'm rooting for you. <laughs> okay, we're taking time. Maybe I can reveal the answer because I have another one. I have another one. Okay, I will reveal, reveal these answers because I want you, I want the last puzzle to be the next one. So this one is summer. Like the sum of two are summer. Did you get it? <laughs> okay, for the oh. last one, for the final one. <laughs> quite tricky, okay. <laughs> for the last one, then we will, uh, the, the first one to get the answer right will choose the, the last chosen one. 
can we uh, can we see participants and uh, from uh, uh, other participants that haven't participated yet? Oh, Los Leslie Soto, my life is wrong. Liza, my one and only life is wrong. Money is wrong. Sorry, Alejandros. Please give it a try. Clue. Uh, it includes the words, my life. <laughs> my eternal. Oh, Mary Claudel got it right. Four ones in my life because we have four number one in between my life, in, the, in between the word or the letters of my life. So we have four ones in my life. Okay, Mary Claudel, can we hear your voice? Hello, yes. Hi, Mary Claudel. Uh, Mary Claudel, uh, Claudel uh, if you would allow, can we give the last, uh, the last uh, chosen one to Gerardo? <laughs> Since we haven't heard okay. uh, no his problem. voice yet. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mary Claudel. Gerardo. Uh, yeah. Hi. Yeah, okay. Now we can hear you well. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, I'm Before ready. Before we start this today's, uh, today's session, let's pick the last question. Okay. You may participate and answer the question in the chat box, of course, uh, everyone. Okay, what motivates you to work hard? This is a great uh, finale question. <laughs> Good question. <clears throat> um... I don't know the project. Oh, the project. The project um, are very, very interesting. For yeah. What art? Nice, uh, nice to hear that, Gerardo. So now that uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> I, I mistakenly clicked it. <laughs> so now that uh, I'm sure that uh, everyone is. Uh, attentive and I have your attention and everyone I see is everyone is smiling uh, I will uh, return the floor to Miss Liza for our next part nice meeting you guys nice meeting you thank you Dee that is so very very much fun I don't know if did you guys have fun like I think uh, in Philippines we also call that as um, say what you see right like the game yeah uh actually yeah. uh the, the puzzle is called rebus puzzles but i don't mm. know i don't know if uh it has another names yeah i think we have that in like in elementary days or grade school days like the teacher would always say okay, say what you see <laughs> but okay but, but anyway without level. further ado um <laughs> <laughs> well, we got the attention of everyone now, so I think it's time to our, I mean, to proceed to our next part. So we have here um, Mr. Hero for the introduction of our first speaker for today. So good morning, Hero. good afternoon, and good evening from the Philippines. So our, desk, our resource speaker is currently the business operation consultant of Bristol Alliance Corporation and a faculty member of Technological University of the Philippines, Manila. He finished his Bachelor of Science in Hotel and Restaurant Management, cum laude, at Batangan Peninsula State University. He earned both his Master of Science in Hotel and Restaurant Management and Doctor in Hospitality Management from Philippine Women's University, Manila. He is also an active hospitality and tourism researcher, a resource speaker, and certified hospitality professional. Our resource speaker is an innovation and transformation in leading, teaching, and learning. is a well organized and award, awarding him as one of the recipients of Global Leaders and Educators Awards 2021, Excellence in Leadership Award, and Award of Accounting, Business, and Management category. Without further ado, let's all welcome our guest speaker, or resource speaker, Dr. Michael Bobet B. Baluyo. Hello, good evening, good morning, and good afternoon to all. Um, thank you very much, Sir Hero, for, uh, for your introduction. 
So before I uh, proceed with my presentation, may I request the host if you can be able to uh, make me as uh, a co-host as well so that I can present my or share my presentation. Thank you. I cannot share my screen, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you very much for allowing. Hey, once again, uh, good morning and good afternoon and good evening to everyone. My name is Dr. Michael Bobet Bullitt and I'm um, from the Philippines. So I'll be talking about a very interesting topic about touristic social entrepreneurship in post-disaster areas. So before I proceed to the uh, topical presentation, I would like to discuss the modal description first. So tourism has evolved into a large scale effort that not only generates income, but also has a positive impact on people's lives. Tourism has contributed to the rapid development in many countries around the world, but it has also raised several concerns about the economic growth it brings. It has been determined to be viable on both a national and international level due to the fact that it encompasses various stages of life in general, it is often associated with crisis and natural disasters. According to Nian et al. 2019, it can be observed that disasters bring various forms of damages and disruptions to tourism in the community, and the worst is economic loss. Globally, the number of disasters and casual casualties, as well as the severity of disaster-related economic losses, have increased dramatically and the disaster crisis has become a barrier to the development of the community. In view of this, this module provides a wider understanding of tourism social entrepreneurship in post-disaster areas. In addition, this module provides approaches on how youth workers can assist the target community to respond to tourism disruption brought by disasters through tourism social entrepreneurship. At the end of this module, the participants are expected to understand the touristic social entrepreneurship in post-disaster areas apply touristic social entrepreneurship frameworks in their target post-disaster areas and adopt the frameworks for the development of activities on touristic social entrepreneurship in their target communities. So let's begin our topical discussion. I will present first what is tourism and what is the benefits of tourism. Communities, particularly those located in less developed countries, are continuously faced with various social problems. The potential for tourism to drive economic uh, growth makes it a relevant tool for developing low-income and underserved communities and place these localities at the center of tourism development. The gains of community where a popular tourist destination is domiciled are endless. This is why many tourism stakeholders have encouraged the government to upgrade or revamp the many tourist destinations which are in dire need of attention. This will enable the host community to enjoy the many benefits of such an attraction. And there are different significant or um, importance of tourism. The first one is uh, tourism employment. This is perhaps the biggest benefits of tourism to any host community. It will definitely create skilled and unskilled employment. Souvenir sellers, food vendors, and retailers will naturally spring up within the community base because they are aware tourists will need their services. Another benefits of tourism is increasing standard of living. This will be nothing like capital flight because tourists are spending in the host community and course, the money made will be injected into the econo econo economy of the host community, thus improving the standards of living. The third benefit is opportunity to preserve culture. In addition to earning revenue, there are also cultural advantages to tourism. 
it can be a source of pride for local communities and allows them to look at their history and cultural heritage and develop their own community identity. This helps the local residents to maintain their traditions and culture while also showcasing it for all the visitors. And lastly, improve infrastructure and develop other income streams. The additional revenue that comes into a community also benefits the government. It means more money will be available to give these destinations much needed facelift. This means that the more the infrastructure improves with new roads being built, parks developed and public spaces improve, the better facilities bring in more visitors. In addition to improving the economy of the host community, it also allows an economy to develop a new form of income. This acts as an insurance policy in case of hard times because the additional monies coming in can help support traditional industries in case they come under financial pressure. So this is all about tourism. Now let's move to social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship creates innovative solutions to immediate social problems and mobilize, mobilizes the ideas, capacities, resources, and social arrangement required for sustainable transformation. Their business models address the root of the issues, but transform sectors, make lasting changes on society, and solve problems that aid or governments have not been able to address sufficiently. Let's take a look at these uh, figures. Since its emergence, social entrepreneurship has received a ben, much ben. yet complementary definition. Um, social entrepreneurship is simply described as a business activity with a central social purpose. This activity is led by social entrepreneurs, individuals who are championed as society's agent of change, viewing social problems as opportunities. In this light, Social entrepreneurship is defined as the process of identifying, evaluating, and exploiting opportunities, aiming at social value uh, creation by means of commercial, market-based activities, and of the use of a wide range of resources. Social entrepreneurship is conceptualized as a market-based approach for generating social impacts and transformation. Social entrepreneurship has been portrayed as an instrument for countering the undesirable cause that traditional solely for profit entrepreneurship brings to society. It is designed to minimize the negative effects or externalities that commercial businesses can have on actors employed in their operations. This can be achieved through social entrepreneurship to create social value whilst generating economic benefits. Social enterprises can engage and operate in different industries just as traditional enterprise do. Engaging in some form of trading, social enterprises create surplus that are used to deliver both economic and social outcomes to their beneficiaries. Furthermore, social enterprises are usually found at the intersections of the four of the work of cooperatives and nonprofit organizations. They tend to operate in the social economy and work by taking higher financial risk to fund their social causes. Having said or discussed the tourism and what is social entrepreneurship, let's combine tourism and social entrepreneurship and discuss uh, the, this, this concept. So given the many social problems that people face today, opportunities for social entrepreneurship can be found in many levels and sectors of society. And tourism is regarded as an industry where social entrepreneurs can find opportunities to fulfill their societal responsibilities. The critical concepts that surround social entrepreneurship include social creation, social innovation, and sustainability. This also encapsulates the significance of social entrepreneurship in the tourism industry. Based on this argument, touristic or tourism social entrepreneurship is defined as a process that uses tourism to create innovative solutions to immediate social, environmental, and economic problems in destinations by mobilizing the ideas, capacities, resources, and social agreements from within or outside the destination required for its sustainable social transformation. Governments and development agencies promote tourism as a tool for development. This rationale alone demonstrates the overarching goal of social entrepreneurship and tourism, 
addressing societal problems, and delivering social benefits through market-based activities. Since the industry is led by enterprises that can be found across the tourism values, value system, it can be asserted that the potential of tourism social entrepreneurship to deliver economic and social benefits will be heightened if these establishments place a greater emphasis on creating social value. Through these alternative approaches, employing social entrepreneurship, more desirable impacts throughout the tourism value chain can be generated, making tourism social entrepreneurship a form of social innovation. Moving forward, let's discuss the post-disaster social entrepreneurship. The frequency and ferocity of recent natural disasters have necessitated the urgency and relevance of disaster-related planning to mitigate risk and hasten recovery. Disasters can thus, can thus both destroy homes and disrupt social networks. The decision to return is, therefore, not just about repairing and rebuilding damage and destroyed homes, but also about rejoining disrupted social networks. PDSE, or the post-disaster social entrepreneurship, plays an important role in redeveloping local economies and rebuilding local infrastructure that are lost amid natural disasters. According to the Forney and Nissen's 2017, PDSE is about ways of organizing and organizations in the post-disaster context that seek to create public benefits. It presents opportunities for social entrepreneurships to play a bigger role as public problem solvers and innovators. Social entrepreneurs perform important social functions before, during, and after a disaster. Before a disaster, they are an important source of information to residents in their communities about the impending danger and how to prepare for it. They also organize evacuations, ensuring that community members leave vulnerable areas and are able to make it to nearby shelters. In the immediate aftermath of disaster, social entrepreneurs organize community members to search for their missing neighbors, to advocate for government resources and the restoration of public services, and to pool their resources to feed, shelter, and otherwise care for their neighbor neighbors who have suffered during the disaster. In the months and years following a disaster, they help to coordinate recovery efforts, lobby, lobby for uh, essential government assistance, and provide key information and services to help displaced residents return and rebuild their communities. There are different functions of the post-disaster social entrepreneurship. One is creating jobs and support to socially vulnerable groups. Next is creating jobs and maintain a stable level of employment. Another function of uh, TSE in post-disaster areas, promoting development of entrepreneurial skills, creating social innovation and change in various areas. And last is reducing poverty risk. I would like to share a framework coming from the National Economic and Development Authority here in the Philippines. We call it the Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Framework or the DRRM Framework. The disruptive nature, inevitability, and unpredictability of disasters have manifold implications for the tourism industry. First, disasters destroy the tourism infrastructure at destinations, thus restricting their ability to receive tourists in the immediate aftermath. Second, disasters impact transit routes and source markets by changing consumer perception of destinations as being safe. At the center of the framework, we have the safe, adaptive, and disaster resilient Filipino communities towards sustainable development. And there are four thematic area evolving this safe, adult, adaptive, and disaster resilient Filipino communities. The first theme is disaster prevention and mitigation. Avoid hazards and mitigate, mitigate their potential impacts by reducing vulnerabilities and exposure and enhancing capacities and communities. The second theme is disaster preparedness. It establishes and strengthens capacities of communities to anticipate, cope, and recover from the negative impacts of emergency occurrence and disasters. The third thematic area is disaster response. 
It provides life preservation and meet the basic subsistence needs of the affected population based on acceptable standards during or immediately after a disaster. And the most important uh, thematic area is the disaster rehabilitation and recovery. It restores and improves facilities, livelihood, and living conditions and organizational capacities of attached communities and reduce disaster risk in accordance with the building back better principle. And this is one of the most important framework we are using here in the Philippines as part of the National Economic and Development Authority. Um, for us to be able to see the perspective of the framework, I have here the example coming from the Boracay Action Plan. Boracay Island is one of the, uh, the most popular island here in the Philippines. As you can see in the screen, there are different cross-cutting concerns. These cross-cutting issues and concerns can be considered in the framework to ensure inclusive and coherent strategies that address specific sectoral concerns. We need to say these are the different factors we have to consider before we move forward to the thematic area. Based on the Boracay Action Plan, uh, there are four thematic areas being applied. The first is um, they use enforcement of laws and regulations in the thematic area number one, which is disaster prevention and mitigation. For the second thematic uh, area, uh, the pollution control and prevention, this is the disaster preparedness they, are use, they used. Um, rehabilitation and recovery of ecosystems uh, is the thematic area number three, their disaster response. And for their rehabilitation and recovery, they use sustainability of island activities. Uh, they use social services and economic services. So um, once they are done with the uh, four thematic areas, they, cannot, they can now uh, give the medium to long-term vision up to the long-term society goal. So this is an example of the N or the, the DRM framework or the uh, disaster recovery uh, management framework coming from the National Economic and Development Authority. This is another um, framework uh, from uh, NIAN 2019. This is community participation and crisis response attitude towards intentional behavior framework. So tourism for community development is not a new agenda. Community-based tourism development concepts and approaches are conceptualize as alternative strategies to conventional mass tourism models. These alternative approaches have been designed to create a sustainable tourism industry in various locations anywhere in the world, improve local living conditions, generate lasting impacts, and ultimately induce sustainable community development. With respect to disaster management, a community is a region that is inhabited by people within the same scope consists of a certain population and number of families and has common disaster risk and disaster reduction goals. The local community has significant, significant social capital, can account for local needs and interests, utilize local resources and potential capabilities more completely, and can compensate for the weak links in community crisis prevention. The unique feelings of community attachment formed by local communities are conducive to the protection of the local tourism resources, cultural traditions, and ecological environment. An important hospitality function of the tourism community and its tourism industry in a hazardous region is to help prepare for visitors since tourists are often unfamiliar with the locality and require help. Community members who perceive their lives or livelihoods to be particularly vulnerable to hazards may cooperate more in relevant disaster preparedness initiatives than those who do not. For the visions to be realized, tourism social entrepreneurs need to engage, interact, and forge meaningful re relationships with local community and institutions. And other organizations and social civic groups, this task is often challenging. Encouraging the latter's participation their involvement, the community itself, and cooperation is important because the local communities are identified here as the main beneficiaries of tourism, social, and um, entrepreneurship. More importantly, these localities provide the necessary resources and those local governments and their agencies create an institutional environment that supports tourism, social enterprises. As with any tourism development initiative, 
the collaborative effort of these actors is pivotal in tourism um, social entrepreneurship. And for the last framework, I would like to connect the current situation, the COVID-19 pandemic, into the form, in the form of resiliency and transformation. As you can see in the screen, the framework stems from the challenges posed by the COVID-19 and the containment measures, such as lockdown, to the global tourism industry. The advisories issued to the tourists by various governments have further added fuel to the fire, resulting in the decline of revenues. The tourism industry seems to have moved from over-tourism to non-tourism or zero at once. The increasing unemployment in other sectors of the global economy will also reflect in the number of tourist visits in the coming years. Segments of the tourism industry, including airlines, hospitality, sports events, restaurants, and cruises are bound to be hammered by the pandemic. The resilience-based framework can help transform the industry both during and after COVID-19. The tourism industry needs to demonstrate resilience from several sides, governments, market players, and local communities need to get their act together to lend resilience to the industry. Technological innovations need to rise to a higher level for speeding up creations in tourism and hospitality. Artificial intelligence, the internet of things, and technologies relating to location, navigation, drones, and robotics are a few areas that need enhancements. This can promote flexible thinking within the tourism industry. This pandemic has compelled industry leaders to explore and analyze other better suited technologies to reboot the industry and regain consumer confidence. Resilience from all sides of the, the value chain may transform the tourism industry into the new global economic order characterized by sustainable tourism climate action, societal well-being, and involvement of local communities. Before I end, I would like to share these last thoughts. The importance of social entrepreneurship for tourism lies in the potential to create social value whilst generating profit, implement social innovation, activities that encourage society's active participation, and foster sustainable development outcomes. This propositions are implied to create a more inclusive and sustainable tourism industry. However, the complexity of the tourism system is fueled by multiple actors or sectors and their dynamic interactions. The frameworks I presented prompts tourism social entrepreneurs to the idea that both social entrepreneurship and tourism are context-bound. There you have it. That's my uh, presentation about the tourism or touristic social entrepreneurship and the connection of TSE to the post-disaster recovery plan. So if you have any more questions or clarifications, feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Michael. Uh, I think it's really, really a very informative uh, topic. For today like for this um for this time we will be able to like uh, make a strategy now since we're on the fourth part of our webinar so we're really getting started like we're doing this like for uh for a long time now and for the next part we have miss jennifer to present some data regarding um the topic for today. Uh, Miss Jen, are you here? Cannot see you. Hello. Oh. Hello, Liza. Thank you, Ate Jen. You're here. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Antonio. Can I, can you assign me as one of the co-hosts so that I can also share my screen? Um, before I give the instruction, Hi. is there any questions or any clarifications to our speakers? From my everything, thank you. I cannot still share my screen, Antonio. Jennifer, um, try now.
Okay. Um, can you see my my screen now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Um, Jen, I think the sound is disabled. We cannot oh, hear the anything. sound. All right. Okay, so I'm going to stop first the sharing. Strongest side. Strongest typhoon that hit the Philippines in 20. Infrastructure. Strongest typhoon that hit the Philippines in 2021. Ravaging the central and southern regions. On disaster management officials reported more than 400 deaths and 78 others still missing. Damage to property and infrastructure is in the billions. A number of Boholanos spent Christmas in makeshift shelters or evacuation centers trying to make sense of how to begin from scratch. Communities were off the grid for days without power and water. Thank you so much. I hope you can still hear me. All right. So it's really my pleasure to share with you our experiences during our last visit this February 11 or 12, if I'm not mistaken, in Bohol. So the news about Bohol before it was hit by the typhoon, pande uh, typhoon and of course a pandemic was really a sad news. So not only Bohol was actually experienced the same heat, but also the other uh, neighboring provinces like the Cebu, Leyte, and other parts of Visayas and Mindanao. So one of the things that we have experienced um, during our journey to Cebu, from Cebu to Bohol, are the devastated vessels. And according to some reports, there are actually 50 vessels run aground due to Odette or the Typhoon Odette. 
And then their trees were really devastated and some of the coconut industries were also affected. In fact, out of 150 tarsiers, only two survives. Okay, the tarsiers are actually the smallest, um, um, the smallest, uh, uh, one of the unique animals in Bohol. And despite that, there were thousands of families affected. Filipinos have nothing to do but to move forward. Okay, so Bohol is currently now at level alert level number two. Some do, doesn't have any access to electricity and some of the people uses polar panel as their source of electricity. And roaming around the Tagbilaran and Panglao, everything was seemingly fine. And most of the food and other establishments, including the hotels, despite that there were damages, still continue to operate. And in case of the Bohol bee farm that we had, witnessed earlier, which is one of the most attractive and unique places in Bohol, has started to open its door to tourists. Some before pandemic lost their jobs, but went back before the heat of typhoon. Then after the typhoon, they, go, they, they, they also experienced another devastation, but tried hard to continue the operation. So our next activity, will be about this. That's why I give you some short um, information or short clips about what happened during the, uh, the death, okay? the devastation and the effects. And then of course, the second thing is about um, what, uh, what, give, or what, uh, are the, what are the measures they uh, experience after a month? Do they have, um, do they open their door to tourists or not? Do they have a lively, food after the disaster and then uh, the next the next part of the video or the last part is about Bohol the, sh the showcase of Bohol what can be seen in Bohol and what are you going to expect in Bohol so in this case in this activity we're going to answer this question what are the strategies that can be applied to touristic social entrepreneurship in post-disaster areas specifically in case of Bohol Island Philippines so there will be three groups. I would like to ask assistance from Antonio and Hiro to group the attendees attendees into three. Your task is to answer these questions. Facilitators will be uh, for group number one, Zelaisa or Liza. Two will be Hiro, and three will be our invited speaker, Sir Michael, if it's okay. And then after twenty minutes, if it's okay. Um, one representative for each group will explain the results of the group work. All right. Okay. Great. See you in 20 minutes. Start. Thank you. Thank you. There are girls where I think we're eight here. Hello, everyone. All right. Hi, Jen. Hello, Liza. Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. So um, from the discussion of the resource speaker, uh, we need to identify uh, maybe steps or strategies that we can apply to the touristic social entrepreneurship in Bohol. So just to let you know, um, Bohol is, um, they have social entrepreneurship as well. And uh, aside from the, I mean, aside from the touristic uh, thing that the Bohol is flourishing before, they have social entrepreneurship and they are still recovering from now. So um, what do you think uh, are the steps that we could do for uh, the post-disaster uh, Yeah, post disaster areas in Bohol. I need to get the link. Where is it? The link for the Padlet. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Oh, I think it's here. 
I can't see it. I was looking for the chat box. It was gone. Okay. Group one. Okay. So maybe I'll start for the first one. Maybe um, since this is post-disaster, we need to assess the area. That would be like our first step. So our team... Uh, BTG Philippines was able to uh, go to Bohol and assess the area, like what are the areas that needs uh, to be improved and like, I mean, like basically, what is Bohol today? So that's the first one, assessment of the area. What do you think could be the second step? Maybe once we identify and we can prioritize what is the most important thing to, to start with. So, for example, if uh, uh, in our assess we find out that uh, there are basic infrastructures that are missing in order to restart the touristic uh, sector, maybe this is uh, the second priority to, to prioritize and uh, decide what is the first step to do the most important before else all right so we need to maybe Liza, you can include that in your palette mm -hmm. i cannot at jen can i ask you to write it down i'm not sure if i can share my screen or could anyone share their screen and could like write on the padlet i was trying to write it but i'm not sure if everyone can see it Let's uh, oh, I think I can share. Or Alejandro can share. Okay. Uh, you have to click the the plus button under. Okay. Yeah. And then you could type uh, group one, maybe, for us. Oh. All right. And then the first step that we had is the assessment of area of the area. And then we had step two. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure who said it, but it's like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Like it's to identify the priority. Um, can you can you help me? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> the priorities. Maybe uh, I went a bit forward, and I also said about the pre and decide where you will act first. So I said the example of the infrastructures. So if there are some specific infrastructures that are, might be missing, this is a prerequisite to, to go on. Okay. Yes. But I have to phrase it now. Eh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. For the third step, maybe anyone could... I mean, fourth? Yeah, I think we're in the fourth step now. Does anyone want to add? Or anyone have idea for the... And um, uh, evaluate uh, the resources available no? for act these priorities, like uh, inventory. I have. Mm, that's nice. Can, we have, can... So we have to identify the resources as uh, the resources available to to act the priorities. Yeah. Inventory, like inventory. And can someone explain me the word inventory because I don't understand it. Uh, the, um, like a list with uh, all resources available and the, and the dam uh, for, uh, in, uh, for one hand, the damage and the missing. Yeah, and for the it. other hand, the resources are still available Okay. okay. So we're on the fifth step. A stock taking, yes. Stock taking. Stock taking. Is the word a stock taking? Stock. A stock taking. Mm. Yes. Is it like this? A stock taking. 
This is stock. E -E. Yes, stock. Yeah. Okay. Stock taking. Okay. And this is? Can you give an example of this? Yes. Uh, for example, is the is the is the list uh, like a list of uh, every kind of resources available for the act, the 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 priorities. This also includes human resources, right? Yes, human resources, material resources, every kind of resources that we can. Yes. Yeah. We yes. can make. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. It, it is like a potential resources to be used in the future for touristic uh, innovation. Yes. Okay. So we're on our next step. Maybe um, community engagement, Liza, because see, we have to come. Uh, we have to engage and convince the people to help us in recovering. Okay. Yes, but uh, but before really this, I I think it's very 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 important to analyze the uh, psychological situation of the people. For uh, it could be assessment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, psychological assessment, yeah, of the community. Like yes. the briefing after the disaster, like what happened? Yes, after the disaster, because the, uh, that determines the disposition to, to, partici to participate. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah, yeah the, the, it, like it's going to be up to them if they want to like engage with the program. Yeah. Because yeah. if they're not in like right mental health, like if they're still yes. traumatized to what happened, they cannot do anything to help the exactly. community. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you want to add? I think we can uh, stop here for the community. No community engagement. No, no. We we need to we need to reach out the other communities also, like uh, by saying. Um, we have to establish um, linkages. Mm, okay. It's a, yeah, establish linkages. linkages. For example, we, we need to link with the other uh, funding agencies who could provide some could help. help us. Okay, yeah. So, well, yeah. Funding agencies, you, you said? Yes. Yeah, funding agencies. Uh, do we add here like the marketing thing already or not yet? Like the promotion of the touristic? I, yeah, I yeah. think uh, something related to the identity of the people. So this uh, for to promote the sense of beloved me. So in this phase, it's important to to find something that uh, that can unite them in the for the uh, for the same objectives for the same aims so it's i think it's important in this case to promote something that um, that give them this sense of identity or um, of proof i i don't know okay so how do how do we write that on the ninth step <laughs> um. Okay. Promote the sense of identity. Also for help them to to recover the the mental health mm. and uh, and the whole pool. Okay. Uh, so I think I think we have discussed a little bit all the steps in general before uh, when a natural disaster happens and how we can start uh, uh, re rebuild let's say the situation but what about uh, the specific uh, objective of establishing uh, like a social entrepreneurship 
What yeah, that do? one is very uh, important. Mm -hmm. um, so what do we do next? What is the aim? I think we can do a, like a list of possible entrepreneurships, uh, things or actions we can uh, improve uh, with all the whole analyze uh, of the steps before. Then these studies we can um, um, uh, think a way to join all all of the problems that we uh, researched before. Uh, for, for example, we have to do a strategy, individual strategy for the uh, community of uh, a specific area. So we have to do a list of possible plans in all uh, the, uh, the areas uh, in addition to help all the, the whole the area, like is Bohol. So can, can we phrase it somehow? I said list of entrepreneurial actions in the local area. And like a brainstorming of uh, the entrepreneurships or possible uh, actions. Okay, nice. How about um, promoting Social entrepreneurship. Yeah, yeah. Once, once we have the list, we have to promote uh, the social entrepreneurship. Or empower, yeah. or empower the community through social uh, entrepreneurship. Nice. Promoting the social. Empower the community by through. promoting. Yeah. The social. The concept Maybe. of. <laughs> yeah. Maybe through different plat platforms, like we have social media, the news or blogs and stuff. I I'm not sure if that's helpful. So maybe it, it, it should be like a combination of traditional and innovative methods. Online oh, is yeah, one, yeah. one way, but also I suppose in communities that are uh, more traditional or they're less, um, you know, familiar with the technological tools, maybe also the face-to-face -face and uh, community activity is also effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. All right. So how many more minutes do we have? Five minutes. <laughs> we need to establish the social <laughs> Yeah. After empowering the community, maybe we already, uh, uh, we already established a social enterprise. Right, I, I don't know. Maybe by we present maybe the idea, a, spe, a specific idea of, of social entrepreneurship to the community, and uh, try to against them, and then establish it. I don't know. Yeah, like uh, make like how how do you make it? I mean, how do you say it? Um, the sustainability of the concept of this social entrepreneurship is like what I think we're trying to meet on halfway and after when uh, when you present uh, the um, the idea of the concept of social entrepreneurship uh, you can to um, you you can uh, to create a guidelines to implement uh, this in a practical way or or are uh, i don't know i one thing that um, the theory and another the yes the, the theory and the requirements and the kind of investment or the practical things to to make this a reality for the community okay like you step 13 mm -hmm. uh, so there I would say that... what what do you do this strategy uh, for example uh, okay. I'm we the need community. to make we need to make a, a business plan no we need to yes business a, plan yes a specific plan and specific uh... yes because remember in this moment the the, the people 
are not uh, resources. There are not resources or I, they don't understand very well uh, how about this um, uh, can be realized. So it's, it's, it's difficult to implement in the, in the reality. Okay. We have uh, two and a half minutes. So are we ready to establish the, the, the social enterprise or we need something more? Because maybe for the business plan afterwards, we have to attract investors. We have to find the co-entrepreneurs. We need to attract people who will jump into the idea, no? Yes. Mm -hmm. Find yes. allies. <laughs> allies and um, establish advertisements, maybe? And then the 15, I think we could establish the social entrepreneurship already. Social like we could just, yeah. And then we need to actually, oh start making a impact. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. I know Jesus is ready to say something. <laughs> no, I think it's like a, a, the evaluation or the control of the correct use of the, of the program or the enterprise. Evaluation of the? of the enterprise or the uh, program. Enterprise. And maybe necessary adjustments because we have a plan, but reality. Yes, only for check that is sustainable uh, by the time, by the, and the, by the future. future. Mm -hmm. I think this is, this is fine. Like we have established like steps already. So I think we could choose now who among ourselves would like to present this, like maybe one or someone could help her as well or help him. Does anyone want to volunteer? Maybe one youth worker? Maybe Jesus. <laughs> I think, yeah, Jesus could do it. And then maybe Lorena, you could help her if he missed something some, yes, in, on, some, on some stuff. <laughs> if it would be okay to Jesus. Jesus, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Vamos, Jesus. Great job, great job. Thank you, everyone. We have a ready book. Thank you. Step. How yeah, to be a social with, entrepreneur in 16 steps. Yes. Yeah, it's already a, a good topic for research. Yeah. yeah and <laughs> All of the answers like, that we had. Yeah, we have a lot of data already. To be honest. Yeah. We thank still you. got 30 seconds. Right. See Thanks you in the beginning. everyone. <laughs> yes. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, hello. hello Let's wait for the others to come back. Okay, I can see them coming out one by one. Okay. I think our topic for today is like really blowing up my mind. <laughs> hello. There's too much, too much information for today. Okay, so do we have everyone here now? Are we still waiting for others? Jobless is ready to present. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right, so should we start? Okay, I think we have three groups, right, Antonio? Yes, exactly. Okay, so do you want to go first? I mean, who wants to go first? Group one, two, or three, or should we do it like in order. Order is okay. good. 
Okay, orderly is good. Okay, so for the group one, we have Jesus. Maybe someone could uh, share screen the platform that we put all the necessary details. Okay, so we have it here. So Jesus, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. So for this activity, we discuss um, easy. Okay, I have it. Yes, easy group to in steps to define a strategy from this situation from whole. For the step one, we decided uh, to do an assessment of the area. A uh, complete assessment uh, is, we think, is the first uh, step. For second, is identify the priorities. For the step three, is the act on the priorities. For example, prerequisites such as infrastructures. The step four, we have to identify the resources available to act on the priorities. It's like doing an inventory or a stock of potential resources to be used in, in tourism. Okay. In the step five, uh, we have this stocking uh, as a list of every count of resources available, including also human resources. This can, this will be uh, specific and uh, it can be uh, sustainable too. For the step six is the, to know the psychological, as, uh, psychological assessment of the community. community. It's important to know how the, the community the see or, or what at what, what level uh, they can collaborate uh, to solve the, the problem, I think like in a touristic program. Okay, for the step seven is community engagement. This is very important to, to do uh, the, the innovation or the entrepreneurship program. In the step eight, we have to establish a linkage, linkage with the other communities funding agencies. Um, and, uh, for example, uh, other um, closer communities that has the same problem or, uh, or maybe another country. We have this linkage uh, to know how to act better. For the step nine, we have to promote a sense of identity to reinforce or um, uh, the 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 value of the local population. In the step ten, have to do a list of possible entrepreneurial actions in the local area, like a brainstorming of ideas in innovation. The step 11 is empower the community by promoting the concept of social entrepreneurship is the topic for today is very important to know the knowledge of, of this uh, topic. Step 12 is create guidelines to implement social entrepreneurship from practical implementation. And then have to make a business plan with the entrepreneurial ideas, then we have to find allies, allies and establish advertisements. In the step 15, we have to establish the social enterprise. And uh, the final step is the evaluation of the enterprise and adjustment and try to ensure it is sustainable uh, by the time or in the future. So this. Thank you very this, much. I think we did like a very detailed one. <laughs> but 
really thank you for the team like this is really a nice step i don't know if this like will really work but since it's very detailed i think we could make like necessary adjustments in the future like this could really work so um let's go to our next group who's our presenter for the second group Who's the second group? <laughs> okay, no, uh, we, we were deciding uh, while uh, the, the group uh, closed. So I asked to um, uh, job bless if it's possible, if you can explain the work we, we made. Okay, so hi. So in, uh, in our group, um, we identify uh, we summar summarize the 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 steps. Uh, uh, it, it includes first the assessment of the area. So in the assessment of area, so we have to identify which uh, which is the least affected. Why? Because they, these are the the place or the community that could uh, uh, start uh, to recover fast. Uh, while the others are be uh, are starting to uh, rebuild their uh, their selves. Next one is we have to um, the enforcement of social entrepreneurship law. Okay, then rehabilitation and recovery of the ecosystem because as mentioned by Antonio, the 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 asset of the uh, uh, of the place is the natural resources. So from that uh, natural resources, so we have to uh, to start in in rebuilding these natural resource resources so that uh, that could be the, the 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 beginning of rebuilding and accepting a uh, tourist uh, um, entrepreneurs or the social entrepreneurship then the uh, we have uh, to uh, identify some um, local and international linkages that could help us uh, to to boom our social entrepreneurs. Uh, so part of that is the what we call the different. Uh, it was mentioned as well the the difference between the so uh, the entrepreneurship and the technopreneurship. Wherein um, sustainability is the number one um, uh, number one aspect or factors that will not uh, compromise the community while uh, rebuilding our, uh, our, our social entrepreneurship. And lastly, is the community empowerment. So through that, uh, we could, um, uh, through that strategy, we could um, already uh, start to rebuild the livelihood of the, uh, the community that uh, experienced since Filipinos are resilient. So I know that they could uh, uh, do and surpass uh, everything once um, somebody or some, uh, uh, once somebody from the community will stand up to start um, rebuilding their um, community. So that is from our group. Thank you, Miss Jobless. That's really informative. I like the idea how Miss Jobless like uh, said how the Filipinos are resilient. I think that's really one of the best qualities the Filipinos have. That's why they always like recover on any disaster that uh, they may encounter. So let's go on our last group. Then we have the group three. Yes, um, in group three, uh, we did not go in so much detail uh, regarding the steps. We mostly discussed uh, um, what is necessary to be done in, in a situation like uh, Bohols. So, of course, the natural resources need to be in the center of all the strategies, uh, not only for the uh, trade, uh, so that you can have a, a steady income, but also for the, uh, to attract the tourists. And uh, we discussed that the social entrepreneurship um, uh, aspect, so the social entrepreneurs, um, their job in this situation would be to make the product that is made by the natural resources uh, as much innovative and attractive uh, as possible to the um, uh, tourists. 
pests also. Um, of course, the area needs to be uh, cleaned of, uh, in the beginning before any, any of the other strategies are employed. So this is also a big priority. Um, and uh, we also discussed that uh, Bohol can also partner up with other areas uh, around it, which can um, uh, create a network altogether of support, not only for prevention, but also for after what's uh, happening because this is a high risk area for tsunamis, earthquakes, et cetera. So a lot of communities um, suffer from this and it would be better if they uh, cooperated. Um, also, uh, Leslie uh, made a very nice suggestion that uh, the community needs to be included and empowered by, uh, for example, asking them to uh, make the tourists, make the people who uh, come, feel a part of the community. So they can uh, make handicrafts together. They can, you know, they can, uh, the tourist can feel a part of the community and this will also uh, have a great advantage to, um, to ha have an, a motive to help. Um, and of course it can uh, help with the mental health of the uh, community because, okay, uh, Filipinos are uh, indeed uh, resilient, uh, but uh, we cannot uh, just, uh, uh, say that and you know it's okay they will recover we, we also have to be there and we have to empower the community and uh, take care of the mental health uh, even strong people they need uh, uh, someone to think of them sometimes <laughs> uh, yeah so I think that's it uh, if I forgot something someone from the group maybe can uh, uh, add it but uh, yes we had a very nice discussion and thank you Michael for facilitating okay Thank you very much. I think that's really also uh, important to, um, to consider like the mental health of the people. Like we cannot build this community. I mean, we cannot rebuild the community without uh, proper mental health of this uh, community because they need to have strong willed minds so they could rebuild themselves as well. Because so, you know, it starts from you. It always starts from you. You cannot do anything if you're not going to do it by yourself. So um, before we finish, I'm not sure, but uh, Sir Michael, as an expert of social entrepreneurship, do you have any uh, advice or uh, I don't know if you have any comments about the strategic steps of the Disarty team that was presented today? Well, I'm very happy to and very pleased to hear all of the um, suggested strategies uh, being uh, discussed a while ago by the different teams. No, um, uh, I think one of the um, uh, the most the most important thing is to analyze first the uh, the destination itself, which is Bohol area. Uh, we have to understand the community. What are the needed um, uh, plans or strategies for us to be able to develop? A very uh, significant and uh, valuable um, strategies for the improvement and the recovery of the Bohol area. I think we. Uh, I wanted to reiterate what uh, the the presenter a while ago uh, mentioned about technopreneurship towards sustainability. I think that is one of the things that we have to understand. Uh, we have to innovate, use our uh, social innovation at the same time, um, asking the community what are their what are their needs. Um, what are the, the different things that we have that they need to uh, to use or maybe um, um, wanted to to recover in that particular community? You no, know? so we have also to um, have a linkages at the same time, partner with the different agencies, not only the the local communities or the local government, but also with other communities uh, uh, with the relationship with this kind of uh, recovery. You no. Know? Um, another thing is also appreciating the, the value of the culture that they have. I think um, the mental health is one of the things that we need to at least um, uh, make a plan as well, no? because uh, these people are um, uh, experiencing a lot of um, stress and anxiety. Uh, we can be able to look for some ways on how can, uh, how can they be able to recover, not only in the... Um, um, financial status, but also mentally and, uh, you know, in their physical aspect as well. So I think um, all of the, the different strategies being mentioned a while ago is uh, applicable. However, we have to at least dis uh, distinguish or identify necessary and appropriate for the Bohol area itself. 
So uh, thank you everyone and uh, thank you for inviting me here. Thank you very much, Sir Michael. So I think uh, Hero wants to add something. Hero. Hi. So, uh, so based on our uh, discussion, so I, this is our day summary of what we have uh, discussed during our uh, during the activity. So you can see on this is the acid with uh, five leaves. So acid represents a, a new hope after the disaster, after what happened to some areas such as the ball. So we need to plant a new seed for a new hope. So we need to have we need to assess the community. We need well, what's being left and what can we stand or what's what can we uh, share for the community, especially in case of Bohol. So where where can we start again? Uh, it's a song that being uh, being said by Sir Mike. Well, why I go starting all over again? So we need to start all over again, and we need to assess the community. Then also we we need to have a strong linkages, a strong linkages and partnership with international and local organizations such as non-government organization to help the community to start uh, planting a new seed of hope. And we need to have engagement, engagement of the community, the people. Uh, the resiliency of the people and how how they wanted to achieve more after those disasters, then we should have the rehab rehabilitation. In rehabilitation, we should consider the whole ecosystem. Ecosystem of people, the culture, the preservation of the culture, the preservation of what is being left for this community. And also, it's a good thing that we should consider in rehabilitation is the mental health of the people. And after that, we should have the empowerment of the community through social uh, entrepreneurship, touristic entrepreneurship, so that uh, we can plant a new seed of hope so that we can start all over again after those disasters. And having said that, thank you for your uh, participation and hope you learned from the Philippine team, especially uh, that the strategies how can we cook up during the or after the disasters. Thank you. Thank you, Hero. Antonio, thank you very much. Do you want to add anything else? <laughs> uh, I want just to thank the, the BTG team. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Michael, for, uh, for your presentation, for contribution. Thank you to everybody. It was an excellent work. Now I think it's very, it was very important because now we have a, a a more clear idea about Bohol, about the situation, what we can do, what is the scenario, what is the contest, uh, what we can do, what we can try to design for the community. So I think it, it's, it, 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 this, is, this was a very first step, uh, very, very important for, for the project. And we hope, of course, for the community, for the island. I think that this is the most important for us to provide uh, an additional contribution, an additional value to the, um, to the restoring and the development of, uh, of Bohol. So thank you. Thank you to everybody. It was an excellent uh, webinar. And uh, just uh, one final request, if we can make a, a picture. So um, uh, Hiro, you, I, can, I think that you can uh, stop the sharing. And uh, OK, and so. Um, at my tree, one, two, and three. Okay, guys, thank you, thank you so much, and uh, see you next month with the final uh, with the final webinar of, uh, of this RT project. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you, Hero. Thank you, Hero. Great work. Sorry for the delay of the. No, it was okay. great. No, the the one. It was great. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for appreciation. Thank you. Bravo, Antonio.
Bye. <laughs> oh. Okay. I'm, I'm tired.